Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I, you know, we, we started this series about faith keeps rolling. And uh, I started out, you know, I was listening to, as some of you have kind of put two and two together, I was listening uh, uh, to some 70s music and uh, uh, going down the road and the song came on that I knew and I turned it up. And I had the top down in the car and I was enjoying every minute of it. Train kept a rolling. And, uh, um, and the Lord spoke in my spirit and said, faith keeps rolling. And, you know, I love trains. And that's just me. But uh, I, I started thinking about, you know, no matter what goes on, you need to understand faith doesn't stop growing. Amen. It doesn't stop rolling on. It doesn't stop growing. It doesn't stop. It doesn't quit. You know, God doesn't stop and he doesn't quit either, does he? Aren't you thankful for that today? Aren't you thankful God, when you needed him the most, leaned over and just said, Jesus, you're just going to have to tell him I can't help him today. Aren't you glad that he didn't do that to you? Because his word is faithful and true. And what he said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he'll do for you right now. All the time. Every day. Can I, can I hear a big amen? amen? Amen. So good to see. Hallelujah. I told Melissa to drive in. You know, I didn't know how, how, how bad my eyes were. But then uh, when I started looking at things, you know, sometimes on Sunday I couldn't see my notes. And I just make stuff up as I go. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway... Um, I got a scripture I want to show you today, and this is in Matthew chapter 21, verses uh, 21 and 22. The Bible says here, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will not be what? Be oh, it will be done. Is that what it says? Yeah. Everybody say that. Say, it will. It be done. Amen. Jesus goes on. He says, And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing. Everybody say believing. Believing, believing you will what? Receive. Receive. Amen. It will be done. When you speak it, it will be done. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will what? Receive. Everybody shout it out. Say, I receive. Amen. And then in the Passion Translation, it reads like this. Jesus replied, listen to the truth. If you have no doubt of God's power and speak out of faith's fullness. Think about that. If you have no doubt in God's power. I don't know about you. I believe God. Amen. Yeah, amen. He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. He is all God. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the greater one and he lives where? Amen. In us. I have no, if you have no doubt of God's power and speak out of faith's faithfulness, you can be the ones who speak to a tree and it will wither away. Even more than that, I love what this reads, even more than that, you could say to this mountain, be lifted up, be thrown into the sea, and it will be done. Everything you pray for with the fullness of faith you will, what? Receive. Amen. Yeah, I, you know, I like to collect translations. This is one that's out of print. And it's uh, Ben Campbell Johnson. And uh, in, in this uh, uh, paraphrase, uh, there's several books. And, and I've looked long and hard to collect all the Gospels and some of the uh, epistles. But uh, uh, I want you to hear how it reads here. The same verses of Scripture in Matthew 21, uh, 20, uh 20, uh, 21 through uh, uh, 22 here. Amen. I got to find it. Here we go. Amen. Using the incident to teach a lesson, Jesus said, I emphasize to you that if in your life you have faith which produces a clear vision of reality, you will not only speak to fig trees, plural, fig trees that are barren, but you will have authority to command mountains, saying, Depart and be cast into the sea, and it will be done. And everything you present to the Father with utter trust in Him will come to pass. Isn't that good how that reads? Amen. You know, when Jesus spoke these words to the disciples, He was telling them, folks, he was telling them that with God, there are no limits. Everybody say, with my God, there's no limits. My God. Amen. He was saying that they could have 
whatever things they asked for if they would just simply believe. Amen. He was letting them know that whatever tree came into their life, or trees, whatever circumstances, whatever problems, whatever situations, just like that train going up that grade right there in Chattanooga, that you, your faith train will keep going right up whatever's before you till it goes over the top of it, tunnels through it, but you will always come out on the other side more blessed and more victorious than you've ever been before. Can I hear an amen? Amen. See, the only thing that limits God and what He can and what He will do in your life is your belief system. The only thing that limits your God in your life, what He can do, what He will do, is your belief system. And it really is just that simple. It really is just that simple. Your life as it exists right now, it is, is a, it is a result of what you've been believing over the past weeks, over the past months, over the past years, for all your life. The things you've been believing, the things you've seen in your spirit, the things you have voiced out of your mouth, you have set those things in motion. You have set those things in motion, and you are the sum result of what has flown out, out of your lips, right thing under your nose right there. And in some cases, we need to do like Barney and tick a lock, right? But in some cases, you need to take that lock off and speak the Father's Word. Because His Word will never return void. You have the authority. You control the, the narrative but you're the one that has to act and speak His Word. Can I hear an amen? See, the good news is, you know, uh, everything in your life can, that may be happening right now that's just not adding up the way you think it should, those things can change, but you need to first believe, and you need to speak His Word. Amen. See, God's already given you the ability to control your future, to control your destiny. Amen. You know, what does the weatherman do every time he gets on the TV? He prophesies about the weather. Isn't that right? He prophesies about the weather. He is a faith man, whether, you, whether he knows it or not, or whether you know it or not. He's prophesying what he thinks it's going to be. And he's got some good things to pull from. He's got his Doppler radar. He's got charts. They've got indications about the barometric readings and all that stuff. But still yet, he's still a prophet. And he still has to prophesy what's going to start from the west coast and move all the way over to the east, what's coming up from the gulf, and what's moving up the, up, up, up the, the Tennessee Valley. That's the only way we got snow when we lived in East Tennessee. It had to come up the valley. Listen, he was prophesying the weather, but see, you have the word of God and you can prophesy to your mountain. You can prophesy to the storm. You can prophesy to your body. You can prophesy to whatever's ailing you, to whatever's going on, and you can change history. Amen? Because your faith keeps rolling. Amen. It keeps rolling. If, you, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, then this life you live is not, an hit, is not a hit and miss experiment. This life, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is not some hit and miss experiment, especially if you know the Word of God. You've got to speak His Word, and you must stay consistent to it. Amen. You know, it's just so vital and so important. Hallelujah. You know, you have been granted access to the things you desire through your ability to believe God. Let me say that again. You've been granted access to the things you desire to the things that you uh, desire through your ability to believe God. Amen. His word is His will, is it not? And so if whatever is in there, whatever promise, you can claim that promise, you can speak that out of your mouth, and it does belong to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, you can tap into limitless miracle power in your life. You can tap into limitless the limitless miracle power of God uh, the, just by simply having faith and not doubting and believing His Word. Amen? You know, Jesus wanted His disciples to think outside the box. I don't believe it was any accident He saw the fig tree that day. I believe He probably looked over His shoulder. He might have even 
uh, maybe raised his voice a little bit because you know that smart mouth Peter is going to pay attention in a heartbeat. Isn't that right? He's going to have something to say. And you know, you know they sat back, because in one, one of the Gospels it says they sat back and kind of mumbled to the, each other about, did you see that? He's talking to trees. That's what one translator wrote, at least. He's talking to that fig tree. He cursed it. Wow. And then they went on into town. But when they came back the next day, they all flipped out and said, Lord, look, that tree. It, it. They were shocked. It literally dried up from the roots and was dead. Wouldn't that have been something to see and hear them cackle about it and go on? But see, Jesus turned to him. He said, you know, just like I spoke to that tree, you can speak to any tree. You can speak to any problem. You can speak to any sickness. You can speak to any disease. You don't have to be a corona zombie. You are free from fear. You can let go of your fear. And you can walk in faith. And you know that God's faithful to you. Amen? You have the ability to change history. You have the ability to move mountains. You have the ability for things to absolutely turn around in your life. But the only thing that limits us in these things is our flesh and our natural mind. In fact, Jesus was making such an example. He wanted them to think outside the box. He wanted them to believe God for the impossible. But with God, the impossible is always probable. Amen? Amen. The only limitations that God knows are the ones that you and I place on Him. Amen. See, Jesus was telling them the only requirement for receiving was their believing. He knew that the only obstacle to this kind of believing was their natural mind. Everybody say natural mind. Put your hand up there on your head and say my natural mind. <laughs> Oh, how many of you felt like you needed super glue to keep your mind stuck to your cracker, to keep yourself right at times? Yeah? yeah? You had things coming at you left and right, and you had opportunities to really just lose your noodle. And, and you know, I don't think I'm going to make it up that hill. No, I'm just not going to do it. There's so much going on. I just don't, I don't have enough coal in the box. I'm not going to make it. Well, you know what? You need to understand something about that, about that thing you got in between your ears called your brain. The natural mind will come up with lots of reasons why it can't happen. How many of you have ever experienced that? Your natural mind will come up with so many reasons why it can't happen. You know, it, it just, you know, it is not going to happen this time. I mean, your mind's going to reason out everything. I'm not going to do this or this or this because it, it, it ain't happening. And you know what you do when you get that way? You talk yourself right out of your blessing. And you know, I, I, we, were, we were talking in the truck yesterday. We were talking about, I was ta I've, sh I've shared this with the church before. I know times when I've gone to the hospital and you hear people talk. You know they're going to be stuck right where they are. You hear it. It never fails. Anytime uh, uh, someone's talking uh, scripture uh, and nothing else, they always get up and go. Amen. I remember talking to a cancer patient once, and when I walked into the room, they were talking about, Oh, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. I know that Jesus is my healer. By His stripes, I've been made whole. But all oh, this chemotherapy. Oh, you know, I'm so tired right now. I'm just so tired. Sometimes I just want to quit. But praise God, by His stripes, I'm made whole. Are you listening to that? It's that kind of talking can cost you your life. Amen. A lot of people go home to be with the Lord early because they never capture and get, get a handle on what's swimming around up here because it sure ain't the word. We've got to get a hold of the truth. It's the truth that will set you up. Amen. The only thing that limits you is it, 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 it's your natural mind, your flesh. Another point here I want you to get. Your natural mind will explain precisely why it won't work. Going back to the hospital again. That one cancer patient, they, they explained precisely why they were feeling like they were. And they owned that feeling. <laughs> it was like a security blanket. Just like the corona zombie syndrome. <laughs> it's like a security blanket. I just believe it. I heard somebody say a, a couple months ago, I know it's going to get me. Wow. <laughs> you know what? It did. 
Folks, God redeems you from the spirit of fear. Sickness and disease is under your feet. And when I breathe air, it goes back out of me. And one of my respiratory reps happens. It goes back out of me singing, there's power in the blood. Are you listening to me? I've sat in that hospital. I heard, uh, this was years and years ago. A pastor had sent me up there to pray for somebody. And I sat and listened to them. They're sweet. I love them. But you know what? Within one week after saying all that stuff about chemo and I'm so tired, within one week they saw Jesus face to face. Forty-eight years old. And the cancer they had wasn't that bad. But they talked them right into an early grave. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Pay attention to what you say. Yeah. Your words, as Charles Capps says, are containers, just like my, my binder here. You know, I, can zi I can't zip it shut right now, but if I zip it shut, uh, it's got good truth in it. If I'm speaking good words in my life, those good truths, those good words, they will open up in my life and do dramatic things for me. But my words, if they're negative, if they're uh, full of fear, if there is no faith in it, those words, those containers will go produce things that you don't want and that you don't need. Are you here today? Why? Number two here, your natural mind will explain precisely why this won't work. You know, I heard uh, one thing about fear you need to understand. There's a difference between the spirit of fear and common sense. There's a difference between the spirit of fear and wisdom. And we need to differentiate between the two. Common sense and wisdom says don't go off the cliff. That's why it's so far down, right? But if you're just going to walk off the cliff, boom, you're going to get to see Jesus early. Isn't that right? Common sense and wisdom says don't do that. Well, the spirit of fear will make you fearful of every little thing. Spiders, we were watching a sitcom. Uh, uh, this guy was constantly, you know, he's big man, big man, big man. Woo, woo. And uh, anytime he sees a spider, hey, get the spider, baby, go get the spider. Go kill the spider for me. It's amazing what people will glorify above the word of God. And we got to stop, look, and listen to the words that we're speaking. Are you with me today? Amen. I know this might seem a little hard, but I'm telling you the truth. Your natural mind will explain precisely why I'll never have that. Or your natural mind will say foolish things like, well, God just hasn't seen fit to do that for me. What? You know, if you believe that, don't take your medicine. Are you listening to me? I take my medicine, but I also pray over it in faith, too. You hear what I'm saying? God's not a child abuser. And there are promise after promise after promise that have to do with your healing, that have to do with the infilling of the Holy Ghost, that have to do with prosperity, that have to do with being redeemed from the curse. But so many people are too religious and too filled with fear to even consider that what Jesus said about speaking to the mountain can change your life. They think that God's doing this to teach them something. They're thinking that, well, God just hadn't seen fit to make this happen for me. Folks, Jesus died for you one time. If what he did wasn't enough, just go up and slap him across the face on the cross. But I'm telling you what he did was enough. Come on, I'm not talking to the wrong crowd this morning, am I? Amen. I believe I receive. By his stripes, I am the healed. Amen. I remember we were walking through Walmart and uh, Todd that uh, works at the pharmacy. I always go, I get my prescription filled you know, for different things. I don't mind telling you, I, I take a blood pressure pill. I don't mind that. But you know, they've never had to raise that blood pressure pill and they've never had to change it. And I'm believing one day I'm going to be off of it. All right. But I take it and I pray over it when I take it. But I stand there talking to Todd and we were just laughing and carrying on about stuff and all that. And he looked at me, he says, you always have a good demeanor about life. He goes, I like that. He said, and he started talking about the military. He says, you know, some of the people I served with, they had no good demeanor whatsoever. <laughs> and he began to share a lot of stories. And uh, 
uh, he said, but you always got a happy, a happy uh, look about you. You always say good things. I said, well, that's the way you need to live. He goes, you know, everybody gets a prescription here at this pharmacy. Some of them I never see again. But the ones that always have a good demeanor and a good happiness and they're not skipping their step, it seems like they're always, uh, always blessed and always happy. And I see them uh, quite often in the store. Healthy, whole, happy, free. I said, well, you know what that is, don't you? He goes, well, preacher, I know it has to do with Jesus. I know that. See, even the world picks up on it. Are you listening to me? What we say matters. What we say matters. Amen. This next point, the natural mind will block. Everybody say block. block. The natural mind will block the supernatural and limit you to the probable, to the logical, and to the rational. Your natural mind will block the power of God, block the supernatural move of the Holy Ghost in your life. Your natural mind will block and limit you to, well, you know, this is probably the way it will end up being for me. Oh, you know, you know, this is the way it always happens for me. I just never have enough. You know, the boss is probably going to fire me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you keep acting like that and don't show up on time and all that good stuff. You know what's going to happen to you. Yeah, sure. Listen, listen, you understand what I'm saying by all this? Your natural mind, your flesh. See, that's the one thing Paul always talked about. I buffet my body. He didn't go to the buffet and eat all he wanted. No, he buffeted. That means he put pressure on it. What did he put the pressure on him for? To speak the word. His whole goal in life, even near his death, was that I may know him more intimately and know the awesome wonders of his resurrection power that raised him from the dead, that dwells within me. I want to know that more intimately. You never come to that place if you let your natural mind limit you. you got to get past that. You know, we, we talk about suffering, and we talk about, well, we're going through this, we're going through that. I guarantee you, you have never lived through things that Paul lived through. You've never been left for dead on the side of the road. You never, when you stood back up, they decided to stone you again. You never found yourself shipwrecked, not once, not twice, but a couple different times. You never, uh, you never had to be snuck out of town because they were going to kill you. If any, being, being, being whipped and beat up and being in the cellar uh, down in the lowest part of the prison where the sewer runs. But none of us have ever been there, have we? But Paul still said, my one goal in life is that I know him more intimately. See, speaking the word matters. Everybody say speaking the word. Speaking the word. Matters. matters. Amen. If you want your faith to keep a rolling, you want to be like that kid's book. I meant to bring that book. Uh, I think I got it on my bookshelf. I ordered a special copy. I know, I got kid's books on my shelf. I know. I got the night before Christmas, too, so that's cool. Uh, but uh, uh, I wanted that, that train book because, you know, that engine, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Right? Yeah. But the train wasn't talking that way at first, was it? No. But then the train kept, I think I can, I think I can. As he got up over the top, he said, I know I can, I know I can, I know I can. And every car that he was pulling, all went with him. Folks, what did Paul say? Even after all that stuff he'd been through, all the things he had done, he wrote most of the New Testament as we know it today. That's why we have church today. All the wonderful things that Paul, the Apostle Paul did. Think about it. All this stuff that has taken place. Man, I'm telling you what. All this stuff that has happened, he did it so that we would know this truth. It all matters. It all revolves around the word of God and the power of this word. Amen. You know, just like Paul, we all face difficult situations. But I love how this reads in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and uh, verse 12. It says, For I know whom I have believed. This is Paul talking to Timothy. I know whom I have believed, and I and and, 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 and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He's saying, I know who I believe in, and I'm persuaded that he is well able. Is God well able in your life? Absolutely. Amen. 
You know, a lot of times when we face difficult situations in life that threaten our destiny, that threaten us, that threaten to destroy us, you know, we got to remind ourselves if we believe God and we feed on His Word, He always strengthens us in those situations. Amen. A lot of times we want to let, let, let our mind play tricks and, and go to what might happen. Or, well, you know, I'm thinking this through. I just don't know if God's going to do it this time. We've got to put a stop to those things that are the, the blockers of your faith. And you got to put a stop to those blockers and you got to begin to speak his word and allow his word to strengthen you. Allow yourself to get into worship and praise and allow his presence to strengthen you. The joy of the Lord is your what? Strength and in his presence is fullness of what? Joy. You got to take the time to put the blockers up and keep those blockers of the flesh away from you so that your mind is focused on what the word of God says and what the truth is, because that's what matters. Amen. No matter what your situation, God's well able. Amen. He, you need to be persuaded that he's able, that he's got your back, that he's got you covered all the time. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you. By might in your inner man is how the scripture reads. With his mighty power, he'll enable you to stand. He'll cause you to grow stronger and mature in the grace and faith that comes from within. Amen. He'll cause you to grow stronger, to have that full, full head of steam so that you can make it anywhere you got to go. Because faith always keeps rolling. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what the devil intended to mess your life up? can actually cause you to turn to God with such faith and power if you just realize what the, what's happening. When the devil's throwing rocks at you, throwing, throwing snowballs at you, trying to get you to react, well, that's the time you've got to realize you turn to God and His Word with such faith that God's grace is imparted to your spirit and your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotion. And you allow the king to turn around your situation because that's what he specializes in, isn't it? He's a turnaround king. But you know what? No matter what the difficult situation is, God can turn it around. Amen. When Paul went through some of the greatest adversities we could ever read, you know, uh, he wrote some of the most inspiring works of, of, of faith and power, though, that we read in the New Testament under the midst of heavy, heavy persecution and adversity. But you know what? You've got to remind yourselves. Look at that hall of faith in, in, in the book of Hebrews. Many of the greatest men and women in the Bible that, that, uh, that served God, that followed God, they all faced challenges that came from dealing with situations and dealing with mountains. They all faced challenges from dealing with situations and dealing with mountains. But yet they refused to quit. They acted on the Word and they found strength to do the will of God because they acted on what the Word said. Amen. You know, today, before I let you go today, listen. Today, you and I uh, have a, ha play a part in, the deter in determining the voice of faith that flows in our life. We all play a part in the voice of faith that is flowing out of our lives. What we do when we're facing the pressures of life, that matters. That matters. What we say matters. What, what, what's the secret of, of surviving and finishing your course? Well, the answer is always found in the Word. Isn't that right? Look at James here. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 4. Notice what it says on the screen here. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith works what? Well, there's just a few people who said the word patience. The trying of your faith works what? Patience. patience. I know people don't like that. How many of you remember as a kid when your mom or your dad said you need to be patient? Did anybody ever say that to you? I remember one time I told my, I stomped my foot and I, and before Matthew and David were born. And I stomped my foot and I said, I don't want to be patient. Man, she slapped me in the next week. <laughs> Man. <laughs> your mama ever slap you in the next week? I mean, mom would say, I'm a jerk, I'm not in your rear end. I got to laughing one day, she said that to me. I thought, I wonder what that'd look like, having a knot jerked in my rear end. She slapped me again. <laughs> Don't you laugh at me. I love my mom. She, she, she made me the end of the man that I am. Amen. But notice what it says. Trials, testing, trying of your faith is going to work what? 
patience. James goes on to say, but let patience have her what? Perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You know, where does a diamond come from? Coal, heat, pressure. You go back further than that, it comes from former life, former stuff, former rocks, former oil. We can go back and really break it down. But a diamond, something that's so precious and pretty, literally comes from a piece of coal that was put under a lot of pressure. And that pressure produced something beautiful and something wonderful. Amen. A lot of the most successful people in, our, in the world, they'll tell you that they didn't start out that way. Yeah. They'll tell you that they did things to get where they were. Uh, we watched a thing on the History Channel about the, the uh, food in America. It was really powerful. All the different stories of fast food restaurants and uh, different types of food. Uh, the Kellogg's company was just an amazing story. Um, but just so many things. But it didn't start out perfect. Do you know that some, some of the cornflakes were started out being an institutional food for, for, for patients with <laughs> had problems uh, with their emotions and stuff? Did you know that? Yeah. And there's just so much I learned from watching that. And I was like, well, that's amazing. But man, he, he patented his cereal, and boy, what a company now. And they don't just own cereal now, they own all sorts of stuff, just like the Mars family. They don't just make uh, M&Ms and Snickers and Milky Way, but they, they, they own Uncle Ben's and all sorts of other uh, uh, food. Uh, huh? Dog food, they make tons of dog food, uh, all sorts of stuff. There's stuff you don't know, but they didn't start out that way. They didn't start out being successful. Pressure was put on them. Pressure came on the scene. And a lot of times we want to quit when pressure's on. A lot of times we want to stop. We want to whine. We want to bellyache. We want to pitch a fit. I don't want to be patient. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me use that illustration like this. When you sit and you get all bent out of shape because your grace is lifted off of you, and you lose where your mouth is running, and you know you, you still have that thing, I, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little moment, and, and, you, and you just lose it, and you know you're in the flesh. Come on, somebody shout me down. Say, Pastor, that's good preaching. All right, thank you. And you, you know when all that happens, you're basically saying, I don't want to be patient. And all your mountains, all your circumstances, Oh, whatever's ailing you, whatever's going on, your complaints about your boss or whatever, that's coming back and slapping you into next week with all that mess still in your path. Because what you say matters. The spirit of grace rising on the inside of you matters. See, we have to let patience work in our life so that we can be perfect just like a diamond, entire, whole, wanting absolutely nothing because our faith has seen us all the way through. We made it up that mountain and over the other side. We tunneled through it. We maybe put some TNT and, and a, lot of, a lot of explosive caps down the, down the rocks and stuff and we blew the mountain open so we could go through it. But all that revolves around your stand of faith. Amen? See, faith keeps rolling. When you're facing different kinds of adversity, you don't lose your joy. Did you hear me? When you're facing all sorts of pressure, all sorts of adversity, you don't lose your joy. You just don't. You cannot give it up. See, the joy of the Lord is your strength, as it says in Nehemiah 8.10. Amen? And the joy of the Lord will strengthen you in your inner man. And fortify your faith. Fortify your faith. Amen. In Philippians 4 and verse 8, Paul told us to rejoice in the Lord always and what? And again. I say rejoice. If you read it in the Greek, it's, it's a continuous plurality or continuous plural. In other words, it's always. Always. It's always. How many times have we just kind of freaked out and 
you know, we're, hand, we're not handling it real well. I guarantee you, if you go back and put your rejoicing shoes back on, you'd be a happier person at this very moment. Amen. Well, it just ain't going right for me. Okay. Well, I'll just put, let me your hand here. Let me agree with you for that right now. You said it. Let's get in agreement with it. If you allow the enemy to, like Jerry, Brother Jerry says, if you allow the enemy to steal your joy, he'll take your goods. Amen. See, we've got to let patience work. How can you rejoice in the middle of trouble? Because you know that you know that the trying of your faith is working patience and it's bringing you into, that, into God's perfect and entire plan for your life. Amen. Now, yeah, I know sometimes we don't like hearing talk like that, but listen, when you know something, you're knowing something that other people don't. Just like Todd at the pharmacy always talking about me being happy. Just like Jeremy and Katie when they drive by our house and I'm out in my yard mowing the grass talking out loud to myself. Other neighbors may think I'm crazy, but I'm happy as a bird. Amen. Why? Because I'm speaking the truth. And the truth revolves around my world. The, the truth is what makes my world the happiest place on earth, not Walt Disney World. It's the word of truth. Amen. You got, you got, you know, you got to know something that other people don't if you're going to be a success. Paul said, I know my Redeemer lives. Job declared his faith in the midst of adversity in Job 5.22. You know, a lot of people miss the importance of, 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 the, of the joy aspect of faith. When you're under pressure, you, you can't miss the importance of just being happy in the midst of just everything, all hell breaking loose. You cannot miss the importance of that fact uh, of just maintaining your joy even when things look like trouble. Amen. You know, a lot of people miss the importance of that working of patience. That working of patience because it affects your life. A lot of times people, when they don't want to be patient, they quit, they get mad, they never mature. And I'm going to tell you right now, curl your big toes up, I love you, but you never grow up. And you'll spend your life going around the same mountain over and over. Things will get good, but then that same spirit of not wanting to be patient, that attitude, that, that thing wells up because you're not getting your way and you stomp in your feet and your troubles smack you into the next job, the next situation, and you go through the same mountain again, go through the same trouble again. And, you, and, and, and people, sometimes people who get that way, they end up blaming God and pull away from Jesus. And then some people say, well, it's just my cross to bear. But all that's wrong. Everything in, 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 in the words that we speak is what keeps our faith rolling on down the road. Amen? Amen. Last verse here. 1 Peter uh, chapter uh, 1, verses 8 through 9. Uh, I just want you to, to hear this with me here. Uh, look at it on the screen too. But uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Yet believing... You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of what? Glory. glory. Receiving what? The end of your faith. I like saying it like this. I believe you, Jesus. I'm going to rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory because your glory lives on the inside of me. And I'm always receiving the end of those things that I've prayed for because I'm standing strong in faith. Amen? Listen, once you know and understand, you no longer have to get angry or depressed when things are, are full, of, full of adversity. Instead, you act on the Word of God and you'll find yourself growing strong and mighty in spirit. You'll find yourself being that overcomer. And I promise you, you need to get yourself ready because the sweet sound of victory is rolling right into your train station right now. Amen. Because what He did for you, what He did for me on the cross was more than enough. And He did all these things. He taught us all these things. He inspired the apostles to teach us even more. 
even more. We learn lessons of love from, from the Apostle John. We, we learn lessons of, about church and all the different things about faith from, from all the rest, all, from Peter, from, from, from uh, uh, Luke, from all the different ones, everything that they wrote and they wrote down, and Paul, all those things. It's those things that we grow in, that we grow our faith in, that causes us to be mighty in spirit. I tell you, when you do those things, you will always see yourself as that overcomer. And I want to tell you something this morning. Right now where you're at, whatever it is you're believing for, I am telling you right now, what God has promised in His Word, that is what will happen when you believe it. Amen. When not only do you believe it, but you speak it. So I challenge you new today. Create a new life for yourself, a life of joy, a life of peace. Be connected to God in ways that you've never dreamed of before. And let's live your dream by doing what Jesus said to do, to speak the word, to believe, because your believing has no limits whatsoever. Can I hear a big amen this morning? Praise God. I want Pastor Matthew to come up here, and I want him to share with you the central theme this morning before we go. Amen. Did you learn something today? Amen. Amen. Pastor Matthew, too, you know, do the altar call this morning. But uh, I want you to listen to this, these next words that you're going to hear. And I know it's in your handout, but I'd like for you this morning, uh, uh, just to speak it in faith what, what, what you're going to hear next. Amen. Praise God. That was good today, wasn't it? Amen. Well, today's central theme, we're going to say it together in just a moment, but I want to read it for you. But it's today I set my heart and mind fully on God's word and the promises he has made to me. I choose to believe God's word is true and that I will receive those things I ask for in prayer. I have mountain moving faith and my faith keeps on rolling. Now, this is a uh, you notice the the first part of the statement here. Today, I set my heart and mind fully. And then later on, it says, I choose. Those are things that you're making this decision for. Either that pressure or that issue or that thing's going to make the decision for you or you're going to make. You're going to either keep going and moving on and moving over or that thing's going to move on and move over right on top of you. Which one are you going to be? I'm going to move forward. Are you? I'm going to move forward. So let's say this together. Today, I set my heart and mind fully on God's word and the promises he has made to me. I choose to believe God's word is true and that I will receive those things I ask for in prayer. I have mountain moving faith. My faith keeps on rolling. Does your faith keep on rolling? Yeah. Are you strong on the inside? Yeah. Are you happy on the inside? Yeah. Are you fortified on the inside? Woo. Stand up with me if you would. Oh, and let's say it on the outside. Let's let the world see it on our face and out of our mouth. Amen. Father, I just thank you, Father. I choose today to put you first. I choose to not let those issues overcome me. Yeah. Today I choose to not be ran over, but to be the one running over. I run over the issue. I push over the mountain because your faith is strong on the inside of me. Your faith is built up on the inside of me. Today, I choose to have mountain moving faith. That mountain is moved out of my way. That sea is parted in my path. Those crooked places are made straight. Those dark places are made light. Those rough places are made smooth because I choose to put your word first and not the issues, not the problems problem not the problems i choose i choose i choose do you choose if you've had that problem if you've had that problem where the issue's been running over you today is your day today is your day to make a decision and a change in your heart all you have to do is say i choose it i choose the word i choose god's word i choose the price that jesus paid for me i choose it i don't choose those issues i don't choose those problems i run over them i run through them i run past them but they don't have any hold on me today i choose to pick god's word first in jesus name thank you father 
And if you're listening today and you've never made Jesus your Lord and your Savior, today is your day to put Him first in your heart and in your mind. All you have to do is say, Jesus, today I choose you. Jesus, today I put you first in my heart. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my trespasses. Today I choose you. And I thank you that you're my Lord and Savior. And if you made that decision, tell somebody. Tell someone that you're near. Tell, call Pastor James and Melissa at home. Text Pastor Thomas at midnight. Whatever you have to do, <laughs> tell somebody about that. Amen. Today is your day. Today is your day. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for how good you are, for how merciful you are. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us, that we are happy, that we are whole, that we are forgiven, that we're saved, that we're going to heaven. And I thank you. We just give you all the praise and glory. And today is the day that we're moving on through this, past this, over this. And we thank you, Jesus. You deserve all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God.